All right. So addition uh, implies where well, the the addition is the expanded form of the product rule. So the product rule going the other way would collapse down to log of m n based on log of m plus log of n. All right. So we already have the expansion. We're going to bring it down. We're going to compress it all. So we're going. Just like we did on the previous page, we're going from this. Come on, settle in. We're going from this backwards. So this would become log of 2x is equal to 1. Now, if you see a log without a subscript, so a log without a base indicated means it's a base 10 logarithm. So we can assume that. We can throw that in there, a little subscript of 10. And then we kick it over into exponential form using that circular movement. 10 goes to the first power with a result of 2x. And then it's linear. 10 to the first power is 10. Divide both sides by 2 and we get the x value equal to five. All right, and it's pretty easy to check because if you put the left side of your equation in as one equation, and so log x plus log two, And then the right side, you put that in as a separate equation and see where they cross. Taking note of only the x value, you see the solution presents itself pretty quickly. All right. Whereas number, number 17 is actually a whole lot easier. That one, if we convert it over, it actually gives us the answer right away. Four to the third power is equal to x. Four to the third is 64. Uh, and that's it. Some of them are some of them are easy. You know, that's how math works sometimes. All right. For number 18, you have a single log on either side, but they're not in optimal form. The one on the right has that little coefficient there. I don't want I don't want a coefficient when it comes to logs. I'd rather use the power rule and make that coefficient into an exponent. So log base nine of two to the third power on the right, log base nine of five minus X on the left. So then what we would do is extract the expressions that are contained within the logarithms A little double tap there. Hold on one sec. There we go. So we extract those and we say five minus x is equal to two to the third power. Because the only thing, the only thing that differs from the left side of the equation to the right side is the subject of the log or the argument. So if we could figure out what value of x makes five minus x into two to the third, then we'll have our answer. Bearing in mind that there are some instances where the, the the solution would not exist at all. We'll get to that in a second. So subtract a five from both sides. Two to the third power is eight. Eight minus five is three. They get negative X is equal to three. And then just kind of carrying it out another step by dividing both sides by a negative one, you get X is equal to negative three. Okay. And so you look at this and you say, well, is that going to be a legitimate solution? You might remember something from the last class about us getting a negative number and it not being a good thing, right? If you get a negative number, you want to be cautious, but it, just because you get a negative number doesn't mean that you dismiss it automatically, right? In this case, the negative number is just fine because if I replace the X here, with a negative three, there's no problem at all. 
right? Five minus negative three is equal to eight. You can take a log of a negative number and you can't take a log of zero. Log of eight is perfectly fine, no matter what the base is, right? So we're in good shape there, but if you're ever in doubt, you do what we did before, put the left side in as one equation, put the right side in as another and see what you get. So y equals function log with that little subscript. We want that little subscript to be nine, five minus x, y equals log uh, three first, then log with the little subscript, put in the nine, and then pop in a two, all right, and see where they cross. They look like they cross right there at the x value of negative three, so we're in pretty good shape. All right, number 19, similar structure to, to number uh, 16, except we have a minus sign instead of a plus sign, so this is the quotient rule, log, m over n is equal to log m minus log n. So we have the expansion of that. And again, we want to work our way backward. So we have this part, at least that's what they gave us. We want to go back to this, All right? So that would boil down to log 20 over x is equal to a one. All right, there's no base indicated, but that's telling me that I have an assumed base of 10. Now I could use that circular path or pattern to write it in exponential form. 10 to the first power is equal to 20 over X. And I could cross multiply and solve, All right? So 10 X, you know, assume that, that 10 is over a one. All right, so 10x is equal to 20. Divide both sides by 10 and you get x is equal to 2. Or you could use a, a smidge of, we'll call it common sense. Because I'm looking at 20 over x is equal to 10. You, you just talk yourself through it. 20 divided by what equals 10? 20 divided by 2 is equal to 10. You know, just uh, knowing some... Uh, Math facts gets you, gets you the distance there, all right? Numbers 20 and 21 are both problems that involve exponentials that need to be converted into log form. The reason we know that they need to be converted into log form is because we have variables contained within the exponents, all right? Whenever that happens, we wanna, we wanna convert it to logs, right? The, uh, the equation in number 21 is in ideal form. It's, it's ready to rock and roll. But 20, I want to rewrite that a little bit. 1.002 raised to the 4x is equal to 2. This is my base. So 1.002 is going to be the base of my logarithm. All right. I'll write that super small. So we're going to say log base of that decimal value of 2 is equal to 4x, All right? Just verifying that it, that it checks out by using that circular pattern. Now, so if I were to go around starting here and working my way around in that circular pattern, I would end up back at this expression here. And 1.002 to the 4x would be equal to 2. So it checks out. And now I have a numerical value on the left-hand side. And the benefit of writing it in this form, I'm going to take this out for a sec. The benefit of writing it in this form is that we've released the x from captivity. All right. Now I want to solve for x. So I'd multiply both sides by a quarter. I could um, divide both sides by four, but it kind of muddies the waters a little bit. It gets a little complicated when you get logs involved to 
divide and it's, it's really just kind of messy. So what I tend to do is I just do it this way, you know? And so now I have a coefficient of one fourth log 1.002 and then pop in the two. And now I have my decimal answer. And it is a decimal answer where we have x is equal to, and so those, those decimal answers, we got to follow the rounding instructions way up, way back, round to uh, answers to four decimal places where necessary. So it's necessary. 86.7, well, four decimal places rounds down to two decimal places. So you could write 7300, but that's really the same as saying um, 73, oh, 0.73, and that's it. All right, so I'm just gonna copy this. Put it in here as like a little check. All right, so for number 21, again, Variable trapped within the exponent. I'm going to need. Oh, I caught me off guard. Uh, I'm going to need to release that variable from captivity by converting over into log form. So again, this is my base. So log base e of 1.25 is equal to 25x. If I want to get the x alone, I multiply both sides by 1 25th. Get a little cancellation here, and you're left with x equals. Now that log base e, you could actually work with that, but log base e is the same as a natural log, so ln. 1.25. Right, you'll find that natural logs are actually very, very useful in uh, in terms of scientific applications. So we want to not neglect them. We, we want to use them wherever uh, wherever possible. If we have a choice, we want to go with the natural log. But anytime you see a base e, uh, you're going to be using a natural log in some capacity. So one over 25 multiplied by ln, I'll just type in the ln, 1.25. And so again, round it to four decimal places. So 0 0.0089. All right. Now, those funky decimals without any context doesn't really mean too much to us, but it, it will in a few minutes, you'll see, you know, when we get to the word problems. All right, number 22 was a little bit more of a, an elaborate example of number 16. You have the, uh, the, the product rule, the uh, product expansion to addition. So again, log of m times n, would be log of m plus log of n, regardless of what the base is. In this case, it's the base 10 again, right? But this is already the expanded form. So I want to take my expanded form and collapse it down, right? So that would become log of x plus 10 times x minus 5. And that whole thing would be equal to 2. All right. The benefit of doing that is now that I have my base 10 established, I can use my circular little motion here to get it into exponential form, thereby releasing the variable x from captivity. All right. So it becomes 10 to the second power is equal to x plus 10 times x minus 5. All right. 10 to the second power, that's easy enough, that's 100. We have to distribute out the right-hand side, little foil, x squared 
outers would be negative 5x plus 10x minus 50. Combine our like terms. So x squared plus 5x minus 50. That's all equal to 100. But if when we're dealing with a quadratic, we want to get our quadratic set equal to 0. You use the zero product property and subtract off the 100. A little something on here just keeping me from drawing a straight line. There we go. So zero is equal to x squared plus 5x minus 150 factor and solve okay right? so we think of two numbers that multiply to 150 i'm thinking 15 and 10. now i see a number that ends in a zero i can't help myself but i think 10 is one of the factors right and so if i want them to subtract to equal a five because the two signs have to be different because of this this has got to be the positive and that's got to be the negative. That being said, you could always, you know, just kind of, I will say cheat and look it up on Desmos, you know, but you'll get X is equal to negative 15. X is equal to 10. When you set each of those equal to zero, right? So, you know, that just that quadratic piece, you're looking at X squared, plus 5x minus 150. You could just check Desmos to see where it crosses the x-axis, find, finding the roots. And so you can get the solution without having to do the algebra. That's not a problem. But we need to check our solutions back into the original function, or in this case, equation, and make sure that it, they they don't violate any rules of logarithms. Like for example, if I put a negative 15 in for X, I get a negative for this piece right here. Negative inside the log is no good. So this one's out. All right, if I put in a 10, I'm fine. So I actually only have one solution here. All right, so you just gotta be careful about little things like that. The last one, number 23 has a couple of logs on the left but only a single log on the right. So we wanna clean up the left and see how that goes. I see a coefficient here of the log. That coefficient should become the power of the log. Okay, I guess I can live with that. All right, so it should become the power of the term contained within the logarithm by the power rule. So log base six of 216 minus log base six of 36 to the one half power. I'll worry about the right hand side in a sec. All right, 36 to the one half power, that's the same as saying the square root of 36. Square root of 36 is six. Now there's a couple of ways you can go from here. One way would be to do what we've been doing before and that is to kind of collapse down the log and see where that takes us. Another thing is to look at it numerically and say, all right, well, we know the definition of a logarithm where you're looking for the number that the base has to be raised to in order to equal the value contained within the log, All right? So you can figure out those values as you go if you want, or you could say, I have a subtraction here. Subtraction is the expanded form of division, the quotient rule. So log base six of 216 divided by six. Now that's gonna be equal to log base six of X. Right, you see the left side and the right side only vary based on what's contained within the log. All right, so the left side 
Well, both sides have a log V6. The left side has a 216 over 6. The right side has an X. Extract those values. And set them equal. 216 divided by 6 is equal to 36. So therefore, X has to be equal to 36. And 36 is a valid number in the domain of a logarithm. So we're good to go there. So I'm actually going to stop that recording.